questions to ask, but uh, before doing so, I would like, uh, uh, Dr. Hébert, if you would like to uh, perhaps respond a little bit more to my colleague, the, the senator. I'm from Quebec. We often read in Quebec newspapers uh, comparisons, comparisons between British Columbia and Quebec, and it's, uh, it's, it's a bit uh, uh, shocking, if you will. In B.C., on the 21st of March, they quickly put an end to uh, mobility between individual homes, which we were unable to do in Quebec until much later. So my question is, uh, with these regional realities, uh, Uh, has the federal government, uh, should the federal government acted more uh, proactively, more aggressively even, if you wish, uh, that uh, it wasn't clear enough? Uh, could they have been more directive uh, uh, more quickly to avoid uh, the great disparity between provinces? Well, the situation in Quebec is quite unique uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, in Quebec, there have been two administrative reforms which merged a lot of institutions into uh, superstructures, uh, regionalized uh, mega groups, if you will. And these long-term care facilities, uh, others responsible, have been marginalized. Priority was given to the hospital emergency services. And uh, there was no uh, recognition of the importance of these uh, long-term care facilities. And of course, uh, the staff, medical trained staff, uh, were uh, drained towards hospital service and away from these other uh, facilities. Now, in uh, the uh, uh, long-term care facilities, there are very few medical professionals, doctors to be precise, uh, because there was a rush to provide a family doctor for all families in Quebec. So the general practitioners, the GPs, uh, migrated away from these long-term care facilities. And the paraprofessionals, the same thing occurred there. So we have shortages, shortages of uh, PSWs, for example, uh, nurses' aides. Uh, no priority was given to long-term care facilities for seniors, for example. And it's not that there are more, there, there are more of them in number. I take a look at Statistics Canada, I've compared uh, what uh, exists. It's 5.7 percent uh, among uh, the aged population. It's 5.9 percent in Quebec. So it's not a greater part of the population. The problem in Quebec is the quality of services within the institutions, which has greatly deteriorated over the last 20 years or so, which allowed uh, an explosion of this um, uh, virus when it did occur even among the staff, not only the residents. As you know, most of these people, the staff, uh, are some are unionized, and they work in a number of different establishments. They, 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 they uh, move from one to the other uh, repeatedly to uh, earn, a, earn a living, and this, of course, is a great vector to transmit this virus. And Canada and its health systems in general has been very active to establish certain uh, uh, principles in the Canada Health Act, for example, for the system as a whole. But that was based basically on hospitals and on doctors. For the rest, it's not really covered or covered adequately in the Canada Health Act. And the federal government does not have the constitutional legitimacy to impose national standards, which is an important and very significant factor. Uh, if it comes under attack constitutionally, how can you fix the system? So the federal government should, in fact, perhaps establish a long-term care act and uh, thereby be able to establish certain standards or, or guidelines or directives, uh, not only for the establishment of services, uh, but also to prepare for any possible crisis such as a pandemic. Thank you very much.